Hello, my delicious co-creators. Lilu here in beautiful Paris. And I'm sitting next to Deva and Miten. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Very nice to see you here in Paris at the end of your European tour. You've just been touring many cities. 22 cities now? 22 cities, yeah. We started in Munich and then we went to Russia and we've been all to Europe. And uh, to be finishing in Paris is very nice, really sweet. <laughs> On this beautiful sunny day too because the weather has been not that great. So I'm excited to interview you about your music, your inspiration and also about Sacred Couple because you, you are this couple you met many years ago. You were 42, you were 20. And you know there's a lot of people talking about... <laughs> There, there is a lot. It's, it's so beautiful when we see you together. You know, the obviously magic is, is happening and in inspiring other couple. And I, I feel we're in this era right now where a lot of people are meeting and being in this sacred space. How do you view that and how was that helpful to you in your own creation and the music? You start. Well, well, let's start with the relationship and the music because the music is very much our tantric practice. So, you know, uh, it's like when we play music and when we chant the mantras for us, it's kind of like getting in bed together, you know? Uh, and uh, the mantras and the affirmation that we feel from... S it's a, a kind of miracle because Deva and I have watched the whole world turn on to mantras. I mean, I, I don't mean the whole world, the whole world, but thousands and thousands of people turn on to um, these sacred uh, and scientifically discovered healing sounds that, that were found many, many thousands of years ago in uh, Rishikesh in uh, India. And to, to be sharing them and to be, actually, it's a sharing that nourishes Deva and I. So the, the whole thing nourishes our connection. It's an affirmation all the way around. We don't have any big answers to why we're so happy, <laughs> apart from that I just do whatever she tells me to do, you know, that's... And the mantra was very much part of your upbringing. So this is something you knew, this is something you do naturally, you feel aligned with it, yeah. totally. I mean, it was very early on in my life because my father really somehow colored my childhood with mantras and with meditation and with exercises that involved, you know, mantric sounds and Gayatri mantra to sing before sleeping. And then uh, when I was 10 or 11 years old, I found my guru Osho, who then actually took me on a path that was much more, um, felt like much more, or still feels like much more my natural home. And then the, the mantras came back many years later, only like late 20s, where I finally rediscovered them for myself and, and, uh, and realized, wow, that's, that's running in my blood. You know, that's like, that's, that's me in the Gayatri Mantra. When I sing it, when I chant it, it's, it's home. So uh, we met in Osho's ashram in India in, when I was, like you said, 20 years old. So that to, to live in that ashram and to experience that sense of community, everybody focused on uh, the inner path, discovering themselves, finding the, the oneness within and how we lived that in the ashram and then finding a way together to share this yeah. traveling around. We've been traveling for 23 years now, constantly. So when you say it's the last concert tonight, it's like, it's not really the last it's concert. It's just like first, one yeah. <laughs> little, you know. It's the first concert of the uh, next tour. You know? Yes, but it's, it's, it's amazing to see with the success that you've uh, met and, and all that, that you're, I mean, you're still together and you're living it and your light is still very much connected. So to me, this is, I mean, this is truly like coming together as a couple to live a mission to inspire, you know, for the greater good. I mean, this is way beyond you. Totally, absolutely, absolutely. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is part of being a sacred couple. Do you have this feeling that you're making love to me, Tan, when you're, when you do it all the time? <laughs> <laughs> one, thing, one thing I should just, I should just uh, change that slightly. It is like getting in bed, but I didn't, what, it, what it's more like, it's like we enter into a temple that's what we do. We enter into a tantric temple and so wherever we play, whether it's in a, a, a stadium or a festival or wherever, or a theater, we always feel like we are entering into a temple. And it's not just us that brings that energy, it's everybody who comes. We have the opportunity to be together 
in a sacred space and create together, not us creating, but create together mm. a, a moment of stillness, meditation, celebration of life and positive vibes and energy. Mm. So powerful when we get together and we have this, 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 this thought of love or of peace or of... So it's like you're, you're saying, sh I mean, shine your light out, shine this love, let it emanate out of you, right? Yes, and find it within, you know, find, yes. it, find the light within and that's, that guides you, you know, it guides you in the right place, you know. Yeah. Same yeah. for the songs, this is where it comes from. How do the songs, how are the songs created? Just from my experience, you know, of life, really. I, I once stopped being a musician and uh, I don't really consider myself anymore a, a musician or Deva because there's a, a certain stigma attached to being a musician that uh, I don't really... Uh, Uh, adhere to anymore and and so for me when I came to Osho and came to the ashram my first my first real positive action was to s give away all my guitars and not be a musician anymore quote unquote and so I spent many years in Osho's ashram just chopping carrots and washing the rice and cleaning and everything like that until the music came back naturally. And when it came back naturally, it came back as a healing, and that's what happens. It, it's a, it, it came back, it was reborn in the ashram, and the music and the, and the songs that I made were very much focused on saying thank you to my guru. That's all I wanted to do. And uh, as, as I've, you know, this was 30 years ago or something, so naturally the the uh, songs evolved into trying to express something not really trying it's just the what comes out but it's it's an expression of uh what i live and and how i live my life with deva and the life with our crew we have a team of people that travel with us of course and we are a family and i consider every i consider all of the people who are watching this And your people, you know, your audience, part of our family. We are a big spiritual family now all over the planet. And when I, when I look back to what I started in the 60s, the, the, it's astounding how this family has grown all over the world. We play in Russia to five or six thousand people in a rock stadium. And that's, that's incredible to have that many people chanting and that many people be, being able collectively to sit in silence and to sit in a meditative space together with nowhere to go, no plan, no action, nothing to do, just settled in the, in the power of the mantra. To me, that's a miracle, you know? So really, it's a miracle. What is for you the, the, the biggest mantra? <laughs> For me, it's the Gayatri Mantra, and the Gayatri Mantra is considered the oldest mantra, the most powerful, because it uh, stimulates all the energy centers in the body. So it's very healing, purifying, and uh, it's, it's a prayer to the sun, it's the energy of the sun. Yeah. And just like the sun shines on everything, the Gayatri Mantra lights up everything, lights up our spirit, and uh, you know, from that light we can then take action that is pure. Mm. Yeah, because it's about uh, the, the pure actions, um, because we can be vessels, literally, of the divine, of light. Huh? And sometimes our ego kicks in, our, our spiritual ego sometimes even. H how do you clean that pipe? You know, How do you keep it pure? And because I could feel both of you, your, your beautiful energy and alignment. But how, what's your advice for musicians or in life? To keep I mean, it clear, we are the mantras, I guess. <laughs> the mantras, and we know we have each other, so we. Yeah. He keeps me in check very beautifully, <laughs> lovingly, and uh, <clears throat> it's such a, it's a good question, and uh, also you know because sometimes all I can see is that everything I do comes from the ego, and then it's like wow, and then you feel like wow, but that's the vehicle that I have in this world to act, and it'll always have to be some kind of defined ego thing, because that's how we kind of function in this world, and you know, not to get the reverse ego either, you know, like so it's, you basically can just watch it and do your best and just keep <laughs> keep, I just because we, I didn't feel I did anything for this, you know I didn't feel I really even deserve it you know so that is also really very humbling because I feel like I'm just 
receiving this incredible gift I could have never even imagined. Yeah. And wow, who am I to say this is me? You know, this is, I've done nothing. You know, so this is it flows me. through you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, on top of me, I don't know. No, but I think that's the key. I think what what you said is mm. the, is really the key. And I think uh, that what we've done we've never been ambitious with this it's never been anything to do with uh, you know when you ask me about musicians i would say for musicians uh keep it real and don't project into the future don't project any kind of idea you know if you if you have an audience of two people that's that's a miracle so give you know to stay to give to give your whole attention and your whole um, focus on the moment and not to say if I do this maybe more people would come and listen to me or something like that that's really uh, that's the that's created by the what is called the music industry when it becomes a product and when you're earning money with it and that's uh, almost death to music, to real music, because it's produced and for another reason. What what we did, we started to play in the ashram, then we started to play in meditation centers in Europe, and every time we played, more people started to come, and that's the way it is right to this day in Paris, that 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 we just come and people come and we join together. It's not in any way about financial or fame in any that's not what this is and i think that's very important that keeps it real and fresh and humble like Deva said she's very much humbled by what's happening all Deva can do is chant you know and uh, the people find it so empowering is because there's so much humility and so much honesty in in what in her voice it's just so simple and natural and and for me, that's what it's all about. It's about staying in the moment with your devotion. Yeah. Devotion is... It's devoted to, 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 to music, to light, to the sun. Exactly. And to that oneness, you know, that feeling of we are all in this together. There's the love that connects us. There's the silence where we can really feel that love mm. that the mantras bring. And it's really a shortcut to meditation. Because when you sing and chant, the silence happens so strong by itself. You know, you can't help it. You just yeah. have to just, ah, you just have to sit in it. And then there's all these people ready to sit in it too. You know, they're all ready, like uh, no more coughing, no more, you know, restlessness, shuffling. We can just be now, you know, be connected. It's mm. very precious. Yeah, and you mm. couldn't have done it without each other. No, like no, Miten is... I mean, Miten is a shaman. Just the way he can, he he uh, he is guiding the the evenings energetically and musically. It's I'm still in total awe and and so grateful that you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. amazing. During difficult times, what question do you ask yourself, or what do you do? Mantras. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good between question. you as a couple. Well, we never have. <laughs> You never have. It's like flowing. I it's mean, pretty quick it's when they come, but it's like five minute, five minute argument. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, we we've never we've never really had to uh, work at this. We've never had to have counseling sessions, or we've never had to sit down and discuss how or what that was. It's it it it's a flow, you know, and it's a very organic flow and it, and and I think over the years we've become such good friends that the that the criteria for me and Deva is how can we support each other's spiritual journey that's more important than than anything else that's the most important thing because we're such good friends I want David to flower if it means her leaving me or whatever if that's if that's her for her journey then that's that's what I want from her I just want her to flower in life and and I know she wants the same for me so we can so with that basis we can be such good friends and through that and the music and everything that happens we are very happy physically and everything we have a great time together don't we <laughs> <laughs> do you practice tantra um, no not really 
No, no, no I don't think no. that's... Just the beautiful love making connected to this, yeah? I, th I feel our whole life is tantric. I, I don't think we have any like we don't. What we don't, we don't. I think what David meant by no is that we don't have any tantric sexual ritual or anything in our life. We it naturally it, happens. It's just yeah. a flow. The whole thing is a flow, but it's definitely, absolutely tantric. There's no doubt about that. What would Osho say if he was here? Because I, you know, when I found out years and years ago that he already had passed, I just like I want to. You know, I didn't know, and I and I went to the website and I said I want to interview this guy. He's awesome, but it was already too late, you know. So if he had something to say, what would he say here? Like as an advice to what's going on right now in this world, and you know what? It's absolutely impossible to guess what Osho would say. <laughs> It's absolutely impossible, you know. So. I know Osho's happy, you know, and uh, and uh, he was uh, he was such a rebel, you know. He was such a rebel. He wanted us to wake up at any cost. He would stand in front of the whatever to 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 if he could generate the energy of enlightenment and awareness to one person, he would do it. And that that was all. He was so in love with humanity. He really wanted to help humanity come to peace and come to enlightenment. And uh, he did everything he could, everything he could. So, and of course, it started with sex with Osho because it, it was a big one. Yeah, it had to. You know, I think he looked out on all these thousands of Westerners, young, 20-year-olds, and uh, and uh, I think he must have thought to himself. We have to deal with the basic energy. We have yeah. to get that basic energy to rise, you know, and uh, and that's what he did. And he's helped us to move that basic energy of the first chakra, which is survival, all this kind of powerful energy that that gets gets stagnant, and if you don't move it, and that's what's happening in the world. It's so focused on sex that it's just it's just it can't move and Osho's thing was how do we move that energy up and that's what he that's how he helped us for sure because this movement now that is happening is very different than from the the the, the, the peace and love movement and all that I mean this is different or is this uh, is it was it was it does this gradually move because it feels like it's very anchored now and and in the the, the matrix I mean meaning that uh, we're, we're powerfully calling and shining our light to in a different way than than in those years in the 60s or not it's not a different way it's just the seed was flowering you know it was the seed and this is the this is the flower That's all. It's the same seed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good to hear. <laughs> Anything else to add to this conversation uh, for maybe anybody watching this from all around the world? A message that is important to you to share? I mean, when you said what would Osho say? I mean, yeah. what he immediately came was when he says, you know, don't take life seriously. Yes. And I just see everyone, us all, including me, pretty serious, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty. Uh, much in the trance of what we of duality you know so just to have that twinkle in life that we realize wow this is just a lila this is a play mm. you know let's play it as as m with much enjoyment and with much love and not so serious you know it's just really so it's not like so final and so mm. it's like a continuity too we feel like it's just events and we're And, and and in the end we are, we will be whole we're always whole anyway you know so just and whatever whatever we need to make life on earth more peaceful and loving and shiny for ourselves is what we should tune into more so that's where the mantras come in where the meditation comes in where community comes in you know all getting together yeah. yes yes yeah. one thing beautiful it's always helped me also is that uh, this very famous zen saying i think it's in saying anyway uh, this too will pass you know and uh, i think that's a very good key you know like you say if you're suffering with uh, any kind of uh, emotional distress if you can hold that hold that truth it's going to pass and uh, you know if you can hold that then you can look at what you're in in a more a uh, grateful way because that's a lesson even if your husband leaves you or your girlfriend leaves you whatever there's a lesson in there that that is so deep and so important that 
it's it's a gift, but it gets so locked in with the emotion and the the discomfort that it's difficult to separate the gift from the emotion, you know. And this too will pass is a great gift for me. Many times I felt that to be a, a great truth, and it was one that Osho reminded us of many times. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you for taking the time. I know you're super busy and you've been touring and everything. I really appreciate this moment for both with both of you. And I'll be here tonight at your concert. So I look forward to seeing you on the scene here in Paris. Thank you. Thank you again. See you. Thank you. Much love, my delicious co-creators. Blessings. Namaste from Paris. Bye-bye.